In this video, I'm going to be showing you seven short, easy ways to get the deal you want on the vehicle you're looking for. So I've been working on cars for a long time and I now work at a car dealership as well. So I've kind of been in the car game for a long time and I'm starting to see now that I've been in sales for a little while, the tips and tricks that you can actually use that actually get you the discounts on the car. Now keep in mind, yes, I'm a car salesman, but I also would like to let you know, this is gonna help a lot more people if I just let you know what actually works when you go in and you're trying to negotiate. I can tell you what exactly works and the, how you word things, a simple thing. So we'll do a quick video here, just if you're trying to watch something quick before you go into the car dealership, I'm trying to make this video for you. So we'll get right into it. The number one thing you need to do, which hopefully it's not too late now, is do your research. Do your research on the car that you're looking into. If you're walking in and you don't know anything, so you're walking into a Honda or a Ford and you just are, you'll look like just you're lost in the self. So you don't want that. You want to have some sort of idea of what you're getting into. You want to know car, sedan, SUV, like what truck, what, what are you getting into? If you do know what vehicle you're looking at, say you're looking at a Toyota Camry, a lot easier. Look up the Toyota Camry, do your research, know what they're worth, know what your trade-in's worth. Research is a very important part. If you know what your trades are worth in the area, comparables, you can help negotiate your trade-in to a better price. Now, a lot of places will give you a fair price on your trade-in right off the bat, but you will not always find those honest places. And that's where you really have to know ahead of time what your trade is worth or you will get screwed. The other thing you can do is there's online, you, Kelly Blue Book is an easy one, it's not always correct, but there's Kelly Blue Book, Ebbins, you can look at auction values, there's all kinds of things you can do. The other thing is to research the car you're looking at. The car you're looking at, if it seems like it's high in the market, try to see why. Is it because of the trim level, is it because of certain packages within that trim level? There's a lot of reasons a car will be expensive, and not for the reasons you think. But just make sure you do a little bit of research at least so you're not completely lost, because Unfortunately, some people will take advantage of that, and I don't want you to be one of them. The other thing you can do is your budget. Know your budget ahead of time. Don't get don't get sucked into doing a zero down for 84 months on a not $800, $900 a month truck when you came in to look at a RAV4. You know, it, it's we don't see it a lot, but you, I have seen unfortunate situations where people get trapped into things they don't want to be trapped into. They're living on a budget. They're getting their stuff repoed. It's not a good situation. You see bad stuff, but there's genuinely good people in this world. You hope to not be a part of that situation, but you never know. But go in with the budget. Know roughly what you can afford. And if the numbers don't work out, maybe look at something different or try another way. There's lots of other things you can do, but don't get trapped into paying more for something because of pretty buttons and whistles. Sometimes it is good to just sleep on it. Other things. Uh, dealerships. Compare dealerships. Sometimes a dealership or the place you're buying a car from will make the absolute biggest difference you would never believe. If, if you read reviews on one place and it says, oh, this place is great, family friendly, honest people, lovely, haha, that's great. And you read the next one and it says, oh, they're rolling back odometers, worst customer service I've ever had, blah, blah, blah. These are things you should seriously take into consideration. That's not a joke. The, you, you can tell so much about a dealership from the reviews, from the, from the things you see other people, the experience that they've gone through. Don't live it the hard way. Learn from their mistakes. I'm not saying to not give second chances, but I am saying at least do it with a good head on your shoulders because you never know. Other things you can do, when you see the vehicle, if you're buying a brand new vehicle, you're usually going to be okay. You get warranties and all kinds of stuff, but if you're buying a used vehicle, it's always good to take a more mechanically inclined friend along with you. Something as simple as tires, brakes, simple things, air filter, cabin air filter, oil change, wipers, everything can add up over time and you don't want to be left with you know, fifteen hundred dollars worth of car bills by the time you're done with the you know buying a brand new to you car. It's very simple. There's services online that they offer. You can bring people along. Find a way to bring somebody with you if it's a used car. If it's a twenty two with twenty twenty two vehicle with maybe ten thousand miles on it, you're probably in a good boat. If you're buying a two thousand twelve with a hundred ten thousand, sometimes there's there is reasonable concern there. So you always know what you're getting into and part of that goes into that market research in the beginning. Know the vehicle, know the common problems, don't get yourself in a pickle. Another important thing, the negotiation. This is what a lot of people care the most about. And the negotiation is something I really want to touch on. Because negotiation, I can do a whole piece on that if you're interested. But negotiation, when you go in there, there you're always going to have the fight. You're going to have, you want the better deal in the car. And the dealership, the salesperson wants their commission and their good price. You know, it's a business, they're here to make money. And you're here to get a good car for a good price. And both of those things, sometimes it's very tough. I can tell you some of the best ways to do it, absolute best ways to do it, is to go in there and completely know exactly what I was talking about, the worth of your car and the worth of the, like your trade-in and the worth of the vehicle you're buying. Those are your two biggest selling points. 
If you can show comparables in your area that brings your trade up, you know the price of what the vehicle should be, you can bring the car down a little bit, most of the time, not always. But going in there and just saying, I want 500 off the car, I've seen it, usually not work. I want money off, I want, you know, point is I want 5,000 down. It's not like it used to be, in fact, it used to be more of a pulling teeth, I want five grand, we'll sell them three, four and a half, four. It's, I definitely noticed it's not like that anymore. And the market constantly changes. This video will be outdated someday, but at least as of right now, it's very important. You have more of a game plan than you just go in and say you want money off because the right now demand far, far, ex, far expands like what we actually have. The demand for vehicles is still pretty insane and it's not dropping anytime soon that I foresee. Every two, every thousand dollars is about 20 bucks off your payment. Get some off the car, get some off the trade, if you tell them 600 bucks a month out the door, you're you're done. You'll buy a car for 600 bucks. They'll at least work with you. If you give them something to look at and something that's tangible that they know, if we can get them close enough, we have a sale today. They're so much more willing than if you just walk in and say, give me a deal. Give me a discount. What's your best discount? Other things, cars that have been on the lot for a while. Big deal. Cars been on the lot for a long time. You're a lot better off getting a discount than something that's barely hit the lot a day or two ago another big one month end it's still a thing you go in month end they have a quota to meet especially the big dealerships you know they need seven new cars out by the end of the month they have three left you're going to be getting cars close to invoice or at invoice because they need to sell a car and don't be afraid to negotiate that is not something that you should be afraid to do you can get really good deals it may only be 1500 off two grand off some that's that's considered a good bit at this point unfortunately but you know, other places are marking them up a lot higher than that. Where I work, I am very blessed. We have a great culture and great people, and we do things fair. But not all places are like that either. So keep that in mind as well. Always check your warranties. That's something that's super important. Make sure you know what your warranties are. Don't get suckered into bad warranties and things that are fake. Something as simple as Toyotas. Oh, the 100,000 mile seven year warranties that come on Toyotas. It's a big, big deal. You have other, com other Toyota dealerships that maybe their vehicle isn't Toyota certified. They'll give you a fake certification, and it's their version of Toyota certified, but it's not the real thing. So you're not getting a seven year hundred thousand. You're getting a fake version that sounds like something else. And they try to use these catchy words and phrases, but read the fine print, read the papers. And you never know what you're going to get suckered into because you have to be careful. Like I said, I'm fortunate enough. I don't have to deal with a lot of this stuff, but I've heard enough stories to know it exists and it happens. Ask questions. It's my last piece. Just ask questions. Well, if you think something is fishy, it probably is. If you have a bad intuition, there's nothing wrong with trying to trust that and just grab on and say, explain that. Just say, explain that. Talk to me about this. Give them, give something. You know, don't, if something sounds off and then you ask them to repeat it and it sounds off again, you ask them to reword it, it sounds off again. Something is off. You're not crazy. Just pull on that a little bit. Don't get suckered in. Like I said, there's a lot of different sales tactics and things out there. I have made my money, my career off of being the most honest salesman people meet. And part of that is turning people away when something's not right for them and they're just not in the right spot. And that's okay too. But you have to, as a consumer, as a buyer, as someone who's trying to purchase a car, I purchased many cars and sold many cars. So I have a lot of opinion on this. But I'm just telling you what's worked for me, what I've seen work for other people if you don't like it. Don't use it. Do your own tactics. Whatever works. But I just wanted to share at least something that's worked for me and the people I know and the people I've helped get the cars they've wanted that they didn't think they could afford just by giving them little tricks at a table saying, hey, if we present it like this, you're leaving with a car today. If we present it like this, the manager's going to – it's a big difference. So either way, enjoy. I hope this helped you in some bit of way, and have a good rest of your day.